<clears throat> Hi. I'm so sorry, but I just don't think I'm going to be able to do story time today. My throat just... Uh, it feels like I'm just swallowing glass. Well, yeah, I know I'm the only children's librarian, but I'm afraid someone else is going to have to do it today. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, I'm ready. Hi, guys. Hi, I'm Kristen Hillman, and I'm at the Mississippi Library Commission as a library consultant. I've also been a youth services supervisor, so I've done my fair share of story times, and I know how scary it can be when you have a situation like that, where you have somebody out, but you don't have a children's librarian. So not to worry, we are going to show you how to do a simple, easy story time that you can definitely use for all your patrons or your story time programs. But before we get started, there's four things you need to know to have a great story time program. The first one is the theme. The theme of your story time is the big idea, or it's going to be what your story time's about. It could be dinosaurs, it could be frogs. It could even be manners or taking care of yourself. The possibilities for a theme are endless, as long as they're age appropriate to the grade level or the age level you're trying to serve. The second part of the story time, and this may seem a little obvious, are the books. <laughs> you definitely need books in your story time program because that's the basis of what you're doing. But for different age groups, such as toddlers and babies, I recommend just doing about two books their attention levels are a little bit different than preschool and older kids, so we want to keep it short and simple for them, but they also enjoy reading. The third thing you're going to want for your story time program are songs. Songs are extremely important because they break up the monotony of the books. If you ever try to read two or three books in a row to a child, they're going to get a little hazy-eyed and they're going to get a little bored. The songs help break up that monotony and they really help the kids take a brain break from each of those. It doesn't have to be a song either. It could be a chant, it could be a rhyme, it could be a dance, or just a silly thing you say like a tongue twister. The fourth and final thing you're going to need for story time magic is your craft or your activity. Your craft or your activity is going to wrap up the story time, but it's also going to give the kids something to take home. The kids are going to have something to remember your program by, and them and their caregivers are going to want to come back. And that's really, at the end of the day, what you want. You want them to have fun. So don't be caught in a bind. It is easy to learn story time. And here's an example of a super simple story time you can use in your own programs. And remember, for any questions, contact us at the Mississippi Library Commission. We are happy to help. Hello everyone, and welcome to Storytime. Now, I don't know if any of y'all like flowers or do you like to eat food at all? Hmm, I bet you do. Well, do you know food actually comes from pollinators? Pollinators are insects or animals that help us by providing the pollen to other flowers. They rub their bodies or they eat the seeds and they get the flowers pollen from other flowers that helps our flowers and our food grow. Now you probably know about a few pollinators like bees. They are great pollinators. Maybe you knew that butterflies are pollinators. Yeah, they fly around and pollinate plants. But did you know that pollinators can actually be nocturnal, which means they sleep at night, and one of those pollinators are bats! Oh, bats are scary, right? Not true. Bats are actually super helpful and they help pollinate our plants as well and give us food. So today we're gonna learn all about bats. But before we learn about bats, let's go ahead and say hello and get our wiggles out. I bet you have a lot of wiggles to get out, right? So come on, stand up. We're gonna get our wiggles out and say hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello, how are you? Hello, 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 how are you? I'm good. Are you good? I'm great. I'm great. 
Are you great? A wonderful. I'm good. You just good? I'm great. A wonderful. How many of y'all are wonderful? Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. 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 How are you? I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm hungry. That's me. That's so good. I'm tired. Oh, oh. Hungry. I'm not so good. How many of y'all have been not so good? I have. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. 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 How are you? Hello. 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 How are you? Hello. Hello. Hello, how are you? Yeah. Awesome job, y'all. You feel like you got your wiggles out? Because I sure do. Now that we got our wiggles out, we're going to talk about bats. <laughs> well, I love to go to the beach. And I don't know if y'all do. Maybe you're more of a wood per person or a cave person. But these bats love to go to the beach. This book is called Bats at the Beach by Brian Lies. Look at that bat already at the beach playing in the water. Sun slips down and all is still, and soon we can't tell sky from hill. Now from barn and cave and rafter, bats pour out with shrieks of laughter. The rising moon can grow no fatter as sky lights up with gleeful chatter. Quick, call out, tell all you can reach. The moon is just perfect for bats at the beach. Soon we've got our buckets, our trowels, our banjos, blankets, books, and towels. Strapped on our backs and under our wings. Have we forgotten anything? They kind of take the same thing we do to the beach, don't they? Buckets and towels. Launching out into the breeze, we sail above the darkened trees, flying fast to wet our feet where land and foamy ocean meet. At last we hear the deep bass thump as waves on seashores crash and bump. Now the shoreline spreads below, we pull our wings in and down we go. They are landing at the beach. How delicious, oh how sweet, to feel the warm sand beneath our feet. Quick, set up, spread the blankets on the sand. We want to get going where the fun is at hand. We hurry down to test the ocean. Don't forget that moon tan lotion. What's the first thing we should do? So many games before the night is through. Like playing with the stuff we find that others must have left behind. Burying friends from chin to knee. We're scratchy where no sand should be. Making friends from other places with different foods and different faces. Or sailing to terrific heights, taking turns at being kites. Little bats dig their sand caves deep as old bats line the moon. Asleep. There's really no more thrilling ride than surfing on a summer tide or sailing in the wingboat races with salty sea spray in our faces. Look at those bats in boats. Their boats look like fry, french fry containers. <laughs> now it's much time. Mm-mm, what's to eat? Baskets grown with yummy treats. Beetles, mm, ants, and milkweed bugs. Crickets, mm, moths, and pickled slugs. Damselflies are salted skeeters. No room here for picky eaters. Oh, that doesn't sound very tasty to us, but I bet it's tasty to the bats. Bug mallows, bug marshmallows, toast on slender sticks while cousins do their ocean tricks. <laughs> and here on those stomachs hurt, we'll try that snack bar for dessert. Look at what they're doing eating the bugs around the wine. Quick, don't miss it, the old bats are singing the bat songs that they learned when they were first winging. The music rolls on, but no more games. As embers pop within the flames, 
Little ones climb onto leathery laps, determined to rest, but not to nap. The east sky purples, sun is coming, a few last notes of banjo strumming, bring our beach night to an end. So say farewell to newfound friends, pack up our things, shake the sand out, give the noisy gulls a handout. Quick, let's go, let's fly away. We've got to be home before the day. Flutter homeward, drained and weary, small bats doze off, tired and teary. Oh, it's time for them to go to sleep. Daybirds start to chirp and peep. Now back to crack and crevice creep. We sigh and snuggle close together to dream about the moony weather. Shh, now sleep. The moon's out of reach. The night was just perfect for bats at the beach. The end. So we learned that bats like to fly to the beach and one of the ways they do this is by echolocation. They can find stuff using sounds. So we are going to sing a song about echolocation and what it means. Echo, echo, echo location. My way, find my way. <laughs> Shh, here comes Mama, hissed Pip. 
many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawling things Mama Bird brought. Oh no. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, and opened up her mouth. Plop! In dropped a big green grasshopper. <laughs> Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept all night. She ate bugs even though they tasted ugh, awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing, except for one thing. Stella Luna still liked to sleep hanging by her feet. Once when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek! she cried. Get back up here this instant. You're going to fall and break your necks. Have y'all ever heard your mom or dad or caregiver say that to you? I know I have. The birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night, and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved as a good bird should. But is she a bird? All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. How embarrassing. Oh no, what did she do? Pit, Flitter, and Flap landed gracefully on a branch and Stella Luna tried to do the same. Oh no, she didn't get it right. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Then no one will see how clumsy I am. She's going to practice. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We had better get home or we'll get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. All along, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near her. Poor Stella Luna. Hey, a loud voice said, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down. You are, Stella Luna said. Ah, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You're hanging by your thumbs, so that makes you upside down, the creature said. I'm a bat. I'm hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. <laughs> Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not a bat. <laughs> More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. You ate bugs, stuttered one. You slept at night, gasped another. How very, very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child, a bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, You are Stella Luna. You are my baby. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. You survived. Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. They're reunited. But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we're going to crash in the trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in the darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. 
who soon the pads found a yummy mango tree and Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed herself full. But I must tell Pip, Flitter, and Flap. The next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the birds on the way. All the birds flew among the bats, Flap said. I feel upside down here, so the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leapt from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, yelled Flitter. Eee, shrieked Flap. They're going to crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped about, about grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to a tree, and the birds grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. We're safe, said Stella Luna. Then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark, too. We wish you could land on your feet, Flitter replied. Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so much alike, mused Flitter. And how can we feel so different and be so much alike, wondered Pip. I think this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna. But we're friends, and that's a fact. The end. Did you notice in the book how Stella Luna slept at nighttime and her bird friends slept during the day? Well, that's because Stella Luna sleeps at nighttime. She's nocturnal, and the birds are diurnal. They sleep in the daytime. So we're going to sing a song about that so we can tell Docturnal from Diurnal. You ready? Stand up with me. Get ready. Get ready. Check them out. Nocturnal, Diurnal, which one are you? Nocturnal, stop the night. Oh, they're looking for food. Nocturnal, which one are you? So we learned all about bats today, and this is just an easy craft you can do at home. And there's so many things you can use at home that you don't have to pay for, like toilet paper rolls. So today we're gonna make a toilet paper roll bat. And just like Stella Luna, bats don't sleep like this. They sleep upside down. So we're gonna have our bats sleep upside down too. Here's what you'll need to get started. You're going to need a pair of scissors, if you're doing this as a kid, make sure that you get safety scissors or ask an adult to help you. You're gonna need a white crayon or a white pencil to trace out your wings on black paper or black foam. You're gonna need some glue. I like my tacky glue. And you're going to need a single hole punch or something to punch a hole in the bottom of your bat if you plan on hanging him upside down. So we will get started. First, paint your toilet paper roll black I've already gone ahead and done mine, and you're gonna fold his ears. You take the toilet paper roll, and you just fold him up like this. Kind of pinch him on the inside there. You can use your finger. And you make little bat ears just like that. You can fold them just how you like. You kind of sort of look like a bat right there already. Next, what I like to do is trace out my wings. I take a black sheet of cardstock paper or a black sheet of foam like I have here, 
I'm gonna take my white pencil or my white crayon, and I'm just gonna make some bat wings. I like to take my bat and put them in the middle because I like to see just exactly how big to make my wings. You just draw wings. Your wings can be creepy looking. They could be cute bat wings. You could even make it look like the bat symbol if you want it. <laughs> Nothing here except what you want to do. But I'm going to make my bat wings look like Halloween because Halloween's my favorite holiday. So you got your bat wings traced out. You need your good pair of scissors. Remember, if you have trouble cutting, make sure to get the scissors that are the safety scissors or you can have an adult help you at home. I'm a pretty fast cutter because I've had a lot of practice. I've had to cut out a lot of things, but that's okay. It may take you a little bit more time to cut, but practice makes perfect. And we're just cutting out our wings. You can make your wings look like however you want. Make them look like fairy wings if you want, but there's our bat wings. All cut out. What we're gonna do next is we gotta glue our wings onto our bat so he can fly. So you take out your glue. School glue, I have tacky glue here, that works just fine. And get an adult to help you if you can't squirt the glue out because sometimes you just have to stick it a little bit. I put a little dot on my bat. Come on glue. You have to squeeze that glue hard. Just put a dot on your bat. Glue his wings on. Hold that for a little bit just to let it dry. Just so it's good and dry. We don't want those wings to fall off and he can't fly. All right, you're gonna lay your bat down, wing side down so that his wings can dry. And then you're gonna glue your eyes on. You're gonna glue your eyes on the front of your bat, on the side opposite that you glued his wings. There's one eye. Oh, I may need some more glue, but that's okay. Here's the second eye. I like to use two different size eyes because it makes my bat have kind of a more kooky, spooky look instead of, but you can do the same size eyes. You can make your own eyes if you don't want to use googly eyes. You could paint some on or draw some. It's really up to you. There we go. Our bat's coming along. Now what you need to do is make him hang upside down. Maybe hard while he's still drying. So if you have more time, let your back completely dry before hole punching him and putting him on. But for our sake, we're gonna go ahead and do it. So you take your hole puncher, hole punch that back down at the bottom. You're gonna do two holes. All right. Now when you're done with that, take your string, whip it through those holes. Oh, my strings want to fall apart. It's okay, it looks creepier. All right. Put your string through there. Final, tie it up. Come on, Mr. Bat, you gotta hang upside down. It's daytime, you gotta go to sleep. All right, tie him up. And voila, mine's not dry yet. But you gotta hang him down back. Perfect. So when you're not playing with him, hang him upside down so he can go to sleep. Or make multiple of them. Use them as decorations. Happy crafting. Well, I have had so much fun at story time today and I hope all of y'all have too. I hope you have learned a little bit about bats, that they use echolocation to find their food, that they're nocturnal, they sleep at nighttime, and that they sleep upside down and that they are not scary, but we should respect them by not going near them unless we know that it's safe or that we have somebody who knows a lot about bats around us and can help us. So without further ado, let's say goodbye. See you later, alligator. See you later, alligator. In a wild crocodile. In a wild crocodile. I got butterfly. Toodaloo, kangaroo.
Jellyfish. Blow a kiss, jellyfish. Blow a kiss, jellyfish. <laughs>